Hey folks, welcome back to Prime 5, the five biggest Nintendo news stories in the last 24 hours. Occasionally we'll slip in some other news, but we do have five big Nintendo news stories today. I don't want to waste too much of your time, just if you enjoy this kind of content, I would appreciate if you would like and subscribe to the channel. We are attempting to, at some point in channel history, get to 100,000 subscribers, so why not be one of those people that were here first, subscribing first before that happened. Now let's get right into today's news. Our first story deals with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet because we have two big pieces of news. First, let's start with the system itself. They announced a brand new Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Switch OLED, and it has a fully customized backplate and custom Joy-Cons with the base colors of red and purple. Makes a lot of sense, Scarlet and Violet. The dock is fully customized as well, and it's featuring the Pokemon Caradon and Miradon. It comes out on November 4th, a couple weeks before Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which is exactly what happened with the Splatoon 3 OLED edition, which released on the 26th, a couple weeks before September 9th. Now, beyond all of this, we also got a three-minute trailer for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And this trailer showed off a bunch of stuff. I'll have a link to the trailer down below so you can go check the whole thing out. But just to kind of summarize it up, it does show off a map where you can set your own destination. It introduces Team Star, which is a group of rebellious students. It shows off the three story paths, one of them involving Team Stars, the other called Path of Legends, where the goal appears to be to go after unthinkable Pokemon. And the last one is the classic gym mode called Victory Road. Basically, it seems like they're taking all ideas present in other Pokemon games and just expanding them into full-on individual stories. And they are including some big changes to the Pokemon League. However, the details on that are still a bit muddy. The trailer does re-emphasize that you can go where you want and do whatever you want and that there is no forced progression. Pretty great stuff. I'm really excited for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Already got my pre-order in. Why don't you guys guess which version I have pre-ordered? Because I think it's really interesting to see what people think I'm going to get. Next up, the Nintendo Switch did something incredible in the UK. It is now the most profitable individual format in the UK. What the hell are we talking about? Well, here's a nice little list right out of the UK group, and this is based on pure revenue. The Switch beat out vinyl albums, which is at number two, the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 is at number three, CDs at four, DVDs at five, Blu-ray at six, and Xbox at seven. Now, I don't think this has to do with system sales, this has to do with what is selling for a platform, and Switch games, in particular, are selling more than all of these other mediums. So that's really, really interesting, really neat, kind of a fun little factoid to maybe keep in the back of your mind next time you're talking to people about Nintendo Switch, especially if you happen to live in the UK. A story that I originally had planned for today was going to be about, hey, look, is the Mario movie delayed? And it's still a story, but it's a story because, well, it doesn't appear that the Mario movie's been delayed, but people thought it was for about 12 hours. Now, what happened? Essentially, the official website for Illumination France made headlines recently for potentially having the title of the Super Mario movie as they listed it on their website as Super Mario Bros. However, the release date was not up to date and still listed as holiday 2022 or December 2022 to be more specific. Well, the thing is they updated that website and in updating it, they accidentally said holiday of 2023, which is weird since the movie's already officially announced for April of 2023. So people were like, man, is it actually delayed again? No, because they updated the website again today and actually put April of 2023. This just appears to be somebody who decided to update the official website after it was getting attention and then kind of got lazy about it and just changed 22 to 23. And yeah, that was a mistake because they didn't change the month. So they changed the month to April of 2023 now. Doesn't appear that there's any delay. Also notably, Super Mario Bros. doesn't appear to actually be the name of the movie because they have changed it from Super Mario Bros. to the Super Mario Bros. animated film which is clearly not going to be the title and is just a placeholder. So essentially, Illumination Studios, do a better job of upkeeping your websites and we won't have this kind of confusion, will we? So I mentioned the Splatoon 3 OLED before when talking about the Pokemon stuff, but Splatoon 3 itself had its review embargo come up today. And at the time of recording, we got some nice stuff to kind of look at here. So first off, Metacritic has it at an 84, which is one point ahead of Splatoon 2. 
Open Critic also has it at an 84, which is one point higher than Splatoon 2. So across the two aggregate websites for reviews, Splatoon 3 is trending ahead of Splatoon 2. The general consensus, based on just glancing at a whole bunch of different reviews, is that this is the best Splatoon has ever been. It doesn't reinvent the wheel. Instead, it fine-tunes what was already great and makes it tighter, better looking, with more to do than ever before. It is a little bit iterative at times, but the game knows exactly what it is and tunes itself appropriately for it. So, sure, it's not going to do anything to dispel the iterative opinions that some people have of this game, that why does this exist? But the reviews generally go, hey, look, this game knows what it is. It ain't messing around. It ain't going to try to be something that Splatoon isn't, but it's going to try to be the best version of what that could be. And it appears that they might have hit it out of the park. So I expect Splatoon 3 to sell extremely well, not just now, but through the holiday season. And I mean, the Japan sales numbers are going to be insane. Splatoon is one of the biggest IPs in Japan. I, I can't wait to see these launch sales. I... Famitsu charts next week are going to be crazy. And our last story deals with the Nintendo Love Hotel. For those who don't know, there has been a long-standing story about the Nintendo Love Hotel, aka that Nintendo was involved in purchasing what amounted to essentially a brothel back in the day, back in the 60s, in fact, because Nintendo was dabbling in a lot of different things, from taxi cab services and all this other stuff as they were trying to expand their empire. And there is a long-standing belief that Nintendo at one point owned a love hotel. Now, technically, love hotels aren't brothels, but everyone kind of sort of knew back then what happened at those love hotels, right? They were where people went to do what they need to do. So what's interesting about this, of course, is that this has been long accepted as a fact based on a report from a magazine back in the 1990s. But the person who wrote that has been questioned a lot since those days on their validity of their reporting because they found out they made up several reports back then, probably clout chasing. This was clout chasing before the internet was a big deal. So a bit easier to get away with it, but most people just accepted this as a fact. Well, a journalist out in Japan decided, you know what, I'm actually going to research this, and turns out they can't find any reference to Nintendo ever owning a hotel of any kind, let alone a love hotel. They went through all of their financial documents all the way back to 1965, which is the very first year that Nintendo actually publicly reported financial documents. They went through all the magazines and references, all of the history books. There is not a single reference anywhere to Nintendo ever having owned this, sort of making it a urban legend. Now, we could call it an urban legend instead of just straight up fake news, simply because we don't know definitively. This still doesn't definitively answer the question because if they owned it in the early 60s, there might not be documentation of it. If they owned it in the 50s, there definitely wouldn't be documentation of it. And Nintendo's been around since the 1800s. So it very well might have happened, but there isn't actually any evidence, at least surviving today, that it ever was a thing. Now, Nintendo could have scrubbed the records and scrubbed everything and made it so they're squeaky clean and it's not there, also, hey, maybe it would just never existed. So this appears to be an urban legend, but maybe one that people still want to believe because, you know, it could have happened before we had records of things. I don't know. This is just one of those weird stories. All I know is uh, I've never needed a love hotel to uh, get done what I need to get done. Oh, yeah. That's why I got three kids. Anyways, folks, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rebel Jets from Nintendo Prime. This has been a lot of fun, and I'll catch each and every one of you in the next video.